Howdy folks, we are already well into March, but we're going to wrap things up. That was going on in February 2022. There was lots going on, especially with the Six Nations, but other rugby stuff as well. Um, so we'll do some stats and some thanks from February. We're going to talk a little bit carefully about the All Blacks Twitter fury, which is going on as I record this. And uh, a little bit about Johnny Sexton and uh, an overrated... 15, which has been picked by um, by one of the old news sites. So, um, yeah, we'll go through these things. And uh, as always, thank you guys for coming along. Um, February was pretty busy, like I mentioned, with the Six Nations. Welcome along to the like 1.2 thousand new subscribers who joined up. Um, yeah, good good to have you, you people along. Thank you for clicking the subscribe button. YouTube loves engagements, man. Subscribing liking commenting all that kind of stuff i think even disliking to a degree uh youtube loves it so do all that kind of good stuff thank you guys um so much kind of not surprising with the six nations on like all the top viewed content in uh, in february was six nations team of the week stuff ireland against wales scotland against england um anytime there's kind of uh, a big result those um those just draw the most interest right like ireland gave wales a real hiding so that was um, you know, really, really well, um, good at drawing people's attention. Likewise, Scotland's win over England is always a big one. Um, in terms of the geography, for almost 40% of the viewers are from the UK, which speaks to how big the Six Nations is. But interesting, Ireland is two, makes sense. France is three, which is, um, is the highest I think France has ever been. South Africa is four and USA is five. New Zealand and Australia, not even in the top five geographies for February. I guess because we're still kind of getting ready for Super Rugby. We're interested to see if March uh, is any different. But um, yeah, February was a, was a pretty big and interesting month. Remember, Six Nations still got a couple of rounds to go. We're already into Super Rugby. We're already into the MLR. Um, the URC and the Premiership go on. So um, there's even the Japanese rugby going on. So we're, we're full of rugby at this time of the year i will say thanks to you guys who have subscribed and who do like the videos and and watch the videos all that kind of stuff as i said helps a lot also a big special thanks to the uh to the patrons who help support the channel every month if you want to join up please check the link down in the description for patreon that's a big help uh to kind of keeping me afloat a special thank thanks to ian jack and uh michael as well but um yeah all these people uh as i said thanks man it um it just keeps me afloat so uh really really much appreciated if you want to support the channel i mean you can like i said subscribe you can do patreon you can buy me a coffee um if you even need a vpn there's one down in the description vpns are really useful with rugby content being geo-blocked half around the world with like youtube content and whatnot and sometimes using like free free to air broadcasters like the bbc and whatnot for for the urc or for the six nations so vpns there's always one down in the description um i do england rugby store gear sometimes if you ever need gear from them you can uh help me out by using the links down there so any of the links down there vpns sharesies for you guys in new zealand power company like everything it all helps but um yeah cheers uh next thing we'll kind of tread pretty carefully around this one twitter if you guys don't use Twitter, you're probably you're probably better off for it. I feel like I get good value for the most part out of my Twitter usage. I don't tweet a heck of a lot. I do a lot of reading of Twitter, mostly for like rugby news. Like I just want to see what's going on. I pretty much I mostly only follow teams, and I just want to see like who's been signed, who's been let go, who's injured, who's back from injury. Uh, you know, which games are postponed with COVID cases, like that kind of stuff. Twitter is usually one of the fastest places uh, to get that kind of stuff done. Like if you haven't heard, Mario Ledesma is apparently being reported as the new Pumas coach, which will be a video on its own. But um, yeah, I saw that first on Twitter. So Twitter can be a good place for that kind of thing. It can also be a horrendously negative place with just outrage. And that's one that we've got uh, going on at the moment. The All Blacks. Twitter account, which has about a million followers, uh, tweeted something for for Women's Day yesterday, which basically just said, I'll see if I can put it up if I remember to edit it in, um, thanking the, the women in their lives, the mums and daughters and physios and doctors and all that kind of stuff. And that's the kind of thing, if I'm normally on Twitter, 
I just scroll right past that. Like it's not the fact that it's Women's Day. If it was Father's Day or Christmas or New Year's or anything, I'm probably just scrolling right on by because that's not the main reason I use Twitter. I'm, I'm mainly using it to kind of keep up with the play as to what's going on with the news. But boy, did that that uh, generate a lot of comment and largely outrage. Um, the main reason being, and I, I kind of can see it because it's not it's not the best uh, tweet going around. They they fail to mention the Black Ferns, which admittedly has their own account, but you could probably mention the women's players there at some point, man. That's that's a pretty big miss, and I. I'm trying to put my head into the people at the back end running these accounts. Like I've worked at relatively big organizations before and it kind of doesn't surprise me that sometimes the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. If you don't know, I used to work at the, the University of Auckland in like the IT support um, center and our team would field all the calls from the staff whenever they had IT issues. And sometimes the guys running like one application or something, they would make a change which would affect all the end users and they wouldn't tell us. And then we would get flooded with phone calls about people going, what the hell is going on? We would say, I don't know, what's going on? We would ask them, and they'd go, oh yeah, we made a change. Like, it kind of doesn't surprise me that maybe in the back end, the all black social media person, I'm assuming it's different people, was like, I'll put something out for Women's Day about the, how it affects the relevant to all blacks guys and I'll let the black ferns do their thing but common sense would probably dictate you you guys align right you put something which references each other because you can read it to be I didn't read it in the fact that they're saying women can only be mums and supporters and admin and stuff because I don't think that's the intention but it can come across that way right I mean, the fact that the women's game is growing way faster than the men's game, which is declining a wee bit in New Zealand anyway, um, you know, common sense dictates, man, you, you put something about the women's players. For goodness sake, like that's that's pretty obvious. Now, I don't know if that justifies the level of outrage in the comments, to be fair. Everyone seems to be piling on. They love, love throwing digs at the All Blacks because, I mean, their record with women's issues, to be fair, in the past has been pretty sketchy. Um, also, the choice of pictures, because they pictured like four different All Blacks players. They pictured Aaron Smith, who has, um, you know, had relationship issues in the past, to put that kind of mildly. Um, and then uh, Sever Reese, who's had domestic violence issues in the past. So, probably not the smartest guys to pick. Like, I mean, if I wanted to play devil's advocate, I could say, well, maybe that's a good example of you know, how that couple got through a tough time with Aaron Smith and his missus. Like, I don't know what his missus is thinking. They stayed together. Um, and you could say that's a good example of rehabilitation for Severis. But, I mean, honest to goodness, if you're the social media person, don't use those two guys. Pick, pick people who are squeaky clean. Right? It's a pretty bad look. I mean, as I said, you can look at it from the other point of view, but ultimately, it just wasn't very smart. So, um... Yeah, like I said, the, the, the furore stuff does does kind of my head in because it's just it's just such a whirlwind thing where everyone wants to pile in. Um, I did show my wife the, the content as well, just to see. I, I, I just let her read it first to see if she... Because she's full of COVID, by the way. Her and my kids are both full of COVID. I'm the only one not full of COVID right now. But um, yeah, I showed it to her and I said, what do you reckon? And she kind of dismissed it as nonsense. No, not not, not the, the, the outrage. I hadn't told her about the outrage. I just said, read this. What do you think? She just says nonsense. But she's not real sentimental. Neither of us are. Like, we don't do Valentine's Day. We don't really get each other on anything on our birthdays. We're just kind of, we're not very sentimental people. So the fact that there was a tweet for Women's Day, she kind of just dismissed it as, uh, as nonsense and basically just said, I would rather be appreciated for the things that I do, not the fact that I'm a woman. I'm like, yeah, fair enough. Um, and uh, I told her about the context about the two players they used in the pictures and she said yeah basically um, that you can't hold those those things against those guys forever but also pretty dumb choices for pictures and um, yeah I think that was, was that pretty much it that she said so yeah Twitter's a bit of a cesspool um, I don't think there was any malice it's like one of those red card issues right I don't think there was any malice in it 
but it probably wasn't the best technique from the social media person or my son on the other side of that door dropping stuff on the bloody floor again. Anyway, we'll move on from the cesspool, which is social media, uh, to Johnny Sexton. Johnny Sexton's still going to go. I think it's it's a pretty kind of worst kept secret in um, in Irish rugby that Sexton was targeting the 2023 World Cup. His contract has kind of been officially extended, so he's going to be, I think, 38 by the time we get into the World Cup next year so he's going to be getting on and, and he's, he's prone to a few injuries especially kind of the old man injuries you know calf injuries and whatnot but um he's still their main guy right i know carberry steps up and every now and again looks really good but the other time is not so much jack carter doesn't get that much game time even though um he can unleash a back line like maybe nobody else at 10 in, in ireland although his goal kicking is sometimes a bit sus um yeah as long as they manage him properly i think he can certainly uh add some value as well but i don't think he's the kind of guy who plays week in week out right he just needs to be properly managed the workload thing needs to be uh needs to be managed properly with johnny but yeah he, he cops a bit of stick as did richie mccaw towards the end of his career as did dan carter believe it or not towards the end of career we forget about that now because they went out on a high in the 2015 world cup but let me tell you, um, leading up to the World Cup, there were question marks from the rugby public absolutely about whether those guys should still be in the squad. And they um, they still managed to get in and, and win, so that kind of all disappeared. Um, lastly, an overrated 15. This one comes from a website which uh, sometimes has some good stuff and sometimes some other. But um, it was on ruck.co.uk. Apparently they did a vote about um about which would make a uh uh overrated 15. um so yeah i'll go through the names and you guys can let me know what you reckon they reckon geth and jenkins one dylan hartley two and martin castro giovanni number three are any of those players massively overrated i wouldn't have thought so i mean castro, Via, castro giovanni was a bit of a unit wasn't he back in the day uh richie gray and will skelton four and five Will Skelton certainly gets talked up a lot about his sheer size. And I haven't followed him enough since he went to France. But his most recent appearance for the Wallabies wasn't fantastic. And I'm not ever sure that he was in the conversation for like best lock in the world even when he was playing with the Wallabies. Like prior to going to Europe. So maybe. Peter Romani 6, Sebastian Chabal 7, Sergio Parise 8. I think that's a bit harsh on Peter Romani. I don't know. Um, Shabal, maybe. He got like a lot of media attention for his look, maybe more than his games, but he put in some big hits. Parise, I think, also seems a bit tough. Ben Young's 9, Danny Cipriani 10. Um, ben Young's has just, just got stick for the majority of his career that I can remember, and Cipriani, uh, maybe. He's a flashy player. People don't like flashy. It's one thing I've noticed about this. Chris, Chris Ashton, 11. Gavin Henson, 12. Tui Lungi 13. Tui Lungi's injured a lot, which I think doesn't help him. Henson's another one who's maybe the fact that he, as my father would say, loves himself a wee bit, um, probably doesn't help. Chris Ashen likewise with his um, his habit of wanting to finish his tries in style, uh, maybe didn't endear him to people. Uh, George North 14, I thought was pretty tough. And then Johan Husen at 15. I don't know that he's overrated. He just didn't get picked. They just stopped picking him for the spring box. So, yeah, that's their overrated 15. Not a single All Black in the overrated 15, which is a little bit surprising. But, um, yeah, you guys will have to let me know your thoughts on who may be worthy of an overrated 15. I know a lot of New Zealand fans would probably say Sonny Bill Williams because he's one of those guys that just divides opinion. A lot of people love him and, and like, uh, his ability to offload and whatnot, especially, um, you know, endeared him to a lot of people. But then... Um, his code swapping and boxing and, as my dad would say, the idea that he seems to love the spotlight and whatnot didn't adhere him to a lot of other people. Like the All Blacks select selecting him when he would just kind of come straight back into the picture over people who'd been grinding for like the last couple of years uh, bothered some. But anyway, there you go. That's, uh, that's the stuff for February. You guys let me know what you reckon. Um, we'll have a chat about 
Mario Ledesma and uh, Michael Checker shortly, I guess. But for now, that's it. Thanks for this. Patreon down in the description, folks. Other links as well. Cheers, and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Cheers.